How was a weapon stolen in 1971 just recently rediscovered? Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to talk about some modern news for the revolution. So in 1971, a rifle was on loan from the Philadelphia Sons of the Revolution, and it was loaned to the Valley Forge Historical Society. Now, while it was on display at the Historical Society, someone took a crowbar and pried open the display case and took the weapon for themselves. Now, this is a tragedy because it was an American Revolutionary War weapon. But decades and decades went by, and just this past November, a man named Kelly Kinzel, who was an, uh, uh, a fine, not an art collector, a historical object collector, was at a barn sale in Pennsylvania, and he found a weapon that looked very old, and he purchased it. And guess what? 50 years after it was stolen, it was this same weapon. Now, luckily, Kelly Kinzel was a, is a gentleman who returned the weapon. He contacted the FBI, and I uh, used his lawyers to make sure he didn't get in any trouble, contacted the FBI, and returned the weapon to the uh, Philadelphia Sons of the Revolution, who are associated, to my understanding, with the Museum of the American Revolution, where it was just recently redisplayed. So it is an amazingly happy ending to a story where someone stole some history. Unfortunately, we will probably never know who stole it, because even if they were a teenager 50 years ago, well, they've assuredly gotten away with that crime. <laughs> but the gun itself is very interesting. We're not entirely sure who owned the gun, but it is labeled by the creator, a man named Johann Christian Orter. And Johann Christian Orter lived in the Lehigh Valley in the um, years leading up to the American Revolution, the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. He lived in a town called Christian's, Christian Springs, which the, the pronunciation they used was Christian Brun, Christian Sprun, uh, and, and Christian Springs was a Moravian colony that was essentially uh, its own little, com not a commune, but it was their own community. They had their own uh, things going on. Uh, and he did, uh, uh, Order was a gunsmith or a gun stalker, as they called him. And he created some of the finest weapons. What's interesting is I found some letters that were written to and from him, and people were actually getting guns from him from up to 90 miles away, which now is an hour and a half drive, but at the time is a very long distance for someone to go for a weapon when there were obviously much closer people making guns. But uh, such was his renown that order was sought after far and wide. And he also, interestingly enough, sold powder with his guns. And I, I, one of the letters I wrote, I, I read, uh, said how he was giving twice the amount that the person ordered because it was a good powder, which you would think, oh, he's trying to upsell him. No, uh, he knew the person would want more because it was an exceptionally good powder. He also notably tested his weapons before he sent them out, and he also engraved his name into the guns, and that is how we know who it was. Now, unfortunately, uh, for uh, order, he would pass away. Uh, just uh, in 1777, at just 30 years old, and it doesn't seem like he really participated in the war too much, but he was making the highest end weapons for many of the soldiers who participated on, on both sides of the war because he had been selling these guns to the colonists while they considered themselves British before there were divides between loyalist and patriot. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I'll I think I'm going to start doing these news-ish ones every once in a while from here on out. Uh, so if you liked it, please hit like so I know whether or not to keep doing them. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you within Founder tomorrow.